Right, well that was a few seconds for me, but I don't know how long that was for you. Anyway, I've stopped and restarted the recorder. So we can, let's have a quick look at the flight plan uh, from the, the nav point of view. Um, we're going to go, we're, we're taking off to the northeast, so we're taking off on the 06 runway and we're going to do a left turn to ferret and then um, going over London. So that'll be a nice trip, won't it? So let's put that away and go to the now this won't won't be correct because I'm gonna to have to set all these up again. So when I lost the plane I lost the views. Um, in fact I'm not even sure what I'm trying to set up here. I'm trying to I was trying to set up the um, that's right, I'm trying to set up the autopilot, aren't I? So let's come up with a view that you know, does the altitude and the autopilot. And I'm going to put that in as control 3. And the autopilot, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to climb straight ahead. So what you do to get straight ahead is to, is to push that and that sets the heading bug in line with the plane. And then we're going to do a climb and it's going to be a climb at uh, about 1600 feet a minute. Say 1800 feet a minute, which is and we're going to be flying on the heading bug but I'm not I'm going to uh, engage the yaw damper but not the autopilot at the moment because I'm going to do that when we take off so that's the autopilot all set up and we've got our altitude dialed in we don't have, let me turn the checklist off because I'm not really going to use that now um, we've got wind 9 knots from 295 so it's a pretty much a tailwind which is not where I should be taking off on 2.4 but I'm not going to change that at this point and we've got a Q&H of 2.9 a decimal 9.4 so let's dial that in 2.9 decimal 9.4 so it gives us 48 feet altitude so I'll leave that in high idle I don't see there's much um, of a problem with flying in high idle and the other thing that I do need to do obviously is turn on all the lights so there's the landing lights uh, below 10,000 feet taxi light I don't need uh, icing light I don't need uh, but certainly navigation and recognition lights I do need and the strobe and uh, I don't think the tail flood works on this plane so we've got all greens here we've got to turn the transponder on we're squawking 4600 4600 everything else seems to be fine so let's go back to the flying view put the yoke back and uh, call for clearance for takeoff and we're cleared to take off so I'm going to hold it on the brakes a bit did you see that on high idle it tends to creep forwards so let's just give the plane a chance to accelerate up to about 1600 and then I'll give it the final uh, something happened just then which you may not have heard but I did thanks to my superb ground crew I got away I'm just going to climb. Actually, that bug isn't on the heading, is it? Let's put the autopilot on and, and then push that. Is that which one do I push? Pretty sure. It, there we are. No, I pushed it. Yeah, that's it. And now we're. Uh, so we're. we're um, Clear of the runway and, and climbing possibly, so let's put the gear up. And we're at about a thousand feet now, so I'm going to engage the autopilot. And that's going to fly me on the runway heading. Um, uh, 
and what I'm looking for is about 1900 to 1000 to, to, to 2000 on the uh, torque good and climbing at the rate which we are which is about 1800 feet per minute gives me somewhere about 140 knots climb speed which is what I want so the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to switch, uh, switch over and start climbing on the GPS so it'll turn left to ferret and uh, I needed to tell it to follow the GPS so I can either do that by pressing here the VLOC to GPS or I think I can do it by, by pressing here which does the same thing and neither works unless you um, change this now to nav so having changed it to nav it's going to put itself in a left turn and start heading towards ferret and that's the autopilot uh, pretty much engaged should see um, south end down here somewhere I'm going to do what you do in a plane which is move your head <laughs> and, uh, and go down a bit there we are, there of course there it is there's the, um, there's the runway we've just taken off from so, uh, 7 on the numeric keypad to reset that view. Check the torque again. Now, it's important that we clear ourselves to a higher altitude until, you know, well before we get there, otherwise, we're going to have all sorts of problems with the plane leveling off and the autopilot resetting itself. So, I'm going to um, clear us to 12,000. I'm doing it with the wheel on the mouse because if you do it with the wheel on the mouse it tends to stay in hundreds whereas if you drag it you can end up with it does it in tens and so you end up with an odd ten which means it's quite difficult to level off at a flight level so we're still doing uh, 130 knots which is fine I'm going to carry on feeding in the power don't go over 2000 for long though or um, you, will, you will blow up one of the engines let's just um, zoom in a bit on that and uh, just show you that we are oh. let's just go back again there we are show that we're, we're heading to ferret I'm going to um, turn that left just to check that we're the, the right the, where the radar is is working on here you may be able to see a red line here and this is our desired track over the ground and this is us heading in to uh, just declutter that a bit this doesn't really do much I'm looking for a really you know I mean looking people like me I suppose are looking for really high fidelity um, simulations and um, and obviously for the most part they they arrive later rather than sooner for for, for any simulator I suppose on FSX you get you get far more um, fidelity in terms of flight systems this is still going at 130 knots which is fine I'm going to perhaps knock, knock the old climb rate down a bit to uh, there we are to say 1500 um, I did that by pressing 3 on the numeric keypad and then pressing 3 again to restore the view that I was on because this isn't a stored view as such um, here it looks like we've just gone past ferret so let's have a quick look and see where we are I oh, know we're just coming up to ferret that's odd isn't it because the plane in relation to that is not the same as the plane in relation to that and I think that's probably a, a bug um, what I'm going to do is uh, reset the heading bug to the heading that we're on because if the autopilot does start playing up again it's it's nice and easy to be able no, you want to be able to just press heading and steer it steer the plane on the bug to give you like a measure of control and having to set the heading bug is um, before you press that is is one more thing that you don't really want so good we're climbing at uh, 140 go to the flying view we're up into cloud 
we'll have a look at uh, the temperature. Well, it's minus 13. And minus 13. Yeah, it is a cold day. In fact, the humming you can hear is, is partly the heater I've got heating my feet up. So let's put the um, de-icing on the pitot vents, which give us our airspeed. And let's Why not turn it all on? I'm going to arm the auto feather. Auto feathering feathering is turning the uh, propellers at right angles or you know in, in line with the airflow if any one of the propellers fails. Uh, and if one of the engines fails and slows down, this will do it automatically. And we've we've all we've actually got the engine anti-ice on anyway. So uh, we'll have automatic uh, ice protection on the prop. Now, here's a neat feature. We may not be able to see it, but we're looking out the window, and this. Now, why is this black? Oh dear, that's a shame. What that? That's done that because um, we're coming up on 12,000, and, and I haven't cleared us to a higher altitude. Let's just see if I've done it in time. Yeah, I've done it in time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear us up to 24,000 feet now. because, um, And don't forget to carry on feeding in the power. Otherwise things start to get a bit appalling in terms of airspeed and climb rate. So we're going to clear up to 24,000. Flight level 240. Now it won't be flight level 240 unless we set to the international temperature which is uh, temperature in uh, the international pressure setting which is 1013.25 if you're interested millibars or hectopascals and 29.91 inches of mercury so because we've got that set we are now flying in flight level so I can definitely say this is not 13,000 feet this is well, this is flight level 131 and we're going up to flight level 240 so I was just talking about the wings, wasn't I? So let's have a quick look out the, again look at the wings. So the reason this is black is because um, this is uh, the anti-icing part. And the one place you don't want ice is the leading edge of any plane. That's London, isn't it, down there? What a nice view of London. See the old Thames snaking in there. This is probably where I could do with a slightly better graphics card. Now, um, supposing you didn't know whether you had ice, what you'd want to do is you turn on this ice light. And what that does is that literally shines down the wings. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to see it. No, can't. You can only see it at night, but in fact, when next time we fly at night, I'll, I'll turn that on and show you what that's for. Otherwise, you might sort of click that and think, well, that's a bit useless. That, what does that do? That doesn't do much. And the answer is it does. It does do quite a bit. It uh, let's keep feeding the power in. We're very close to feeding in as much power as we've got. Um, and we're over ten thousand feet now, so we can turn the landing lights off. Let's just put the yoke back. Let's go to the co-pilot side. Put the yoke back. Yes. So um, the idea being that you look out your window and you think, uh, holy mackerel, there's a load of ice on the wing, and you turn your icing on. There's um, so where are we coming into? We're coming into Echo Golf, Sierra Golf, that isn't it? Echo Alpha Mike whatever Echo Golf Sierra Golf is. You can find out, just go to aircraft, uh, sorry, location, local map and uh, zoom in. And Stapleford. Stapleford is um, well loved amongst light aircraft pilots because it has a VHF omnidirectional range finder and distance measuring equipment co-located with the airfield which makes it very easy to find so lots of people like flying to Stapleford because they can find it 
and once we reach there we're going to turn south so there we are we'll leave that where that is uh, you can show clouds on here it looks like for the most part we're going to be in the clear doesn't it so we'll um, that's good now how are we doing still climbing at 140 knots no don't feed in too much we don't want engine failure there we are still 2000 torque 16,000 feet climbing at 1500 feet a minute very respectable rate of climb let's have a look here so we say we've got 25,000 feet set on the altitude and I just move sideways a bit you can probably see that a bit better the cabin is depressurizing it's depressurizing at 500 feet a minute and the knob that uh, governs that is this rate you can see if I just adjust that you can see that's going slightly slower and if I roll back on the mouse wheel it should go slightly higher oh, I think it's actually just leveled off um, it's this it's this thing here if we go so we can't really see that what what I could do actually is just pull the um, condition levers back to low idle because in the cruise um, it, don't, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans really so what's this telling us well it's telling us that uh, it's as far as it's concerned we're about 21 21,000 feet and it's depressurized this to 6 and if we look down here you can see we are we want to be at about five and a half at uh, 25 so if I just adjust that slightly you might find it makes a bit of an adjustment there we are so it's adjusting about 400 feet per minute um, what you want to do is adjust at roughly a third of the rate so let's say let's say to make the math easier we're going up to 18,000 and you want to depressurize to six then obviously you want to depressurize 1,000 feet for every 3,000 feet we climb so if we're climbing at 1500 feet a minute we want to depressurize at about 500 feet because 500 is a third of 15 okay so we're down to 1800 I'm going to put us up to max so that's useful to remember for about passing 20,000 feet where we're about max on the torque so when I get to 20,000 is when I can push the old throttles full forwards and not worry um, too much about overstressing the engines I do like the sort of shininess and the, the coloration on this I don't like the paint job but I do like the um, you see the docks down there of course they used to there's the entrance to the dock there they used to lead out to the um, Thames but um, you won't see ships in there now it's a yuppie paradise and this is um, well, it might be the Isle of Dogs, or is this the Isle of Dogs? It might be Sheppy. Well, I think Sheppy's a bit further down. Anyway, there we are. We're over London. We will be in the care of London Control. Now we've we've gone down to 110, and we don't really want that, so uh, we need to um, decrease the rate of climb. And I'm going to decrease it quite aggressively because I really don't want to get into a nose high, tail low stall. Sort of when you're you're flying along using the propeller to keep the plane in the air rather than the wings. So that's what I'm looking to see following that quite aggressive adjustment is is a big increase in the airspeed. Uh, we've only got 1500 feet to go so I'm quite happy with five even 500 feet a minute would be fine or three minutes away from achieving our altitude in fact let's do that let's um, probably down to 
500 feet and uh, let's get going let's uh, get going forwards don't forget when we're cruising we really want to be up at 190 to 200 um, indicated airspeed um, we're doing 130 through the air which is because the air is so thin the air is not pressing pressing into the pitot tube the, to, to give us the correct the ground speed reading so we always read less in thin air than you do the actual ground speed so we're actually doing 190 knots over the ground um, but uh, the thin air is only giving us 140 knots indicated so still that's exactly what we'd expect got a nice red line going through the middle now would be a good time to do a feeder check wouldn't it before we do the um, before we have to worry about levelling out so freeder is fuel fuel is first because it's the most important thing on a plane you can't pull into a cloud and, and fill up so there we are so what you take off with is, is basically all you've got so we're doing really well here um, mind you we're gobbling it up at uh, 350 pounds per minute per engine but um, we've got a, over sort of 1400 pounds on board and um, the radio, well, we don't use the radio because it's a you know a bit more liability than anything. Uh, the engine, that's uh, all these dials here. So we're in the green, we're in the green, we're in the green, um, we're in the green on the turbine. The fuel flow is is high, but we're going to adjust that in a minute. And um, we're in the green on the temperature, oil temperature and pressure. You can see the oil temperature has come up there now, so it's not no longer in the orange; it's in the green. Um, so we've done fuel, we've done radio, we've done engine. I mean, engine is everything. Engine is props. Everything. Engine is everything. And then uh, the direction indicator here. We're reading. Um, the compass is reading uh, just in between 21 to 24, but nearer 21. And we're down here we've got uh, 20, 21 24 but nearer 21 which is fine we're just leveling off the um, artificial horizon is fine the uh, flight director which is that purple banana is is uh, spot on this is spot on which I presume is the um, taken from the GPS course So attitude and altitude, and uh, now altitude you can see we've just overshot, and that's because we need to have altitude select, and that's something I always forget to do. When you're climbing to an altitude, you must press altitude select, otherwise it just carries on with the vertical climb. So what it's done is leveled off, but it's what it's done is it's recorded the altitude that I was at when I pressed the altitude hold button and so we now need to adjust that and it's got stuck on one of this dastardly oh oh Mr. Peebly I've actually got 24,000 would you believe it so now what I can do is I can put it on a in into a, um, a slow descent of 100 feet a minute press the altitude select and when we go back it should descend at 100 feet a minute which is which is pretty slow actually I could probably do 200 feet a minute um, and and that will descend and hold uh, flight level 240 and here we are good we're coming down to Ockham Epsom I think is that beacon on our way to Midhurst and uh, sunny Gibraltar, here we go. So I think we'll call it a day there. That's uh, stage two. If you haven't didn't watch stage one, which was um, was mainly about setting the flight up and uh, in, in also getting the computer set up to record, etc., etc. One last thing I am going to do before I sign off is just uh, course the props off a bit because, as you see, the the props are still 
course, uh, fully coarse, and that's uh, sort of equivalent to first gear. So what I want to do is just pull them back slightly. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push them forward and then use F3 to bring them both back symmetrically. And um, you can see them coming back here. And watch the RPMs here. You'll see that they'll come down. Um, and the torque goes up because the engine's having to work slightly harder because the, as the uh, blades get more coarse they take more of a bite through the air so we're coming back to 19 and one more I think should do it that's lovely so so the ITT has done something hasn't it, it's climbed up it's, I don't know, better people than I will have to say whether that's uh, appropriate and we're a foot away from our assigned altitude and we are at uh, about 184 knots props are 19 and uh, you could probably set the plane up slightly better by referring to the performance table so the one thing that probably nobody looks at but the one thing that really is <laughs> if you're going to print anything out then you may as well have that printed out minus 40 degrees celsius look at that temperature that is shocking isn't it that is shocking it's amazing that these um, these planes run in those sort of temperatures. Uh, and I'm going to leave the anti-icing on because uh, I don't I don't really I don't want to get stuck in ice. So uh, let's just um, have a look, and uh, we'll just uh, lean round and tell everyone that. Uh, well, there's nobody there. I've forgotten. Oh, this, um, this is a ferry flight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my own. Uh, if anything goes wrong, there's nobody to hear me scream and shout, Mummy. Oh well, never mind. It's the uh, lonely life of the ferry pilot. Right, good. Well, thanks for watching. Hoping that was uh, useful. And uh, I'm going to sort of sit back and. Uh, can you leave the can you leave the cockpit to go and make yourself a cup of tea when you're in the cruise? I don't suppose you could. If you can put the what you can do is you can put the I probably wouldn't do it now because I'm over London and uh, but in fact you should be able to put the speakers on audio. Here we are, look. Uh, it puts the, it puts the audios on speakers, or not the speakers on audio, it puts the audio on speaker. So now what happens is if anybody shouts at you what you can do is you can you can hear it, it actually comes out of the speakers of the on the dashboard so not like that um, and uh, so if you were in the back um, you know joining the Mile High Club or making yourself a cup of coffee then um, you could you could hear the fact that air traffic control wanted a word <laughs> right that's it lovely I'll um, see you next time